Welcome to the 23rd edition of this webcast. This is the first episode created after YouTube decided to allow 15 minute segments instead of 10 minute segments. For this show, Ecomaniacs will take us to Maui, Tales from the Critic, Trash is another bad horror movie, and Growing Up Demonic Part 3 will cover the 1980s. But first, more viewer responses. Something called Reej Neej said, what a bunch of losers. Frostman 3D claims Richard Simmons and Geraldo could kick these guys' asses. And Faust6586 said something like, Boys, you better turn so you don't burn. Those comments are stupid and don't deserve responses from me. Is Mysterio 777 tried to type the following? You guys are stupid. You don't know what you're doing. That's not going to give you eternal life. Jesus Christ is the answer. Now there you brainwashing meddlers go again, trying to force this Middle Eastern propaganda down my white American throat. I think Jesus Christ is a fictional character, and the Holy Bible is a work of fiction right up there with Naked Lunch and Alice in Wonderland, but a lot more violent. You read a few of the comments now. Okay. Here's a polite question from Layla Nader. Hello, can you tell me what is your message? Any human being has a dream. What is yours, please? Well, Layla Nader, I'm sorry to tell you this, but my dreams are not very exciting. For example, uh, once I had a dream that me and my friend Danny went to the creek to go catch frogs, but when we got there, there were none. Scabra Cadabra says, I can't honestly believe you guys take yourselves seriously. What the fuck? You make me wish there was a god so I could ask him to send a couple lightning bolts your way. And sure as shit, if there is a devil, he's pissing himself laughing at you spastics. I guess when you don't have to worry about pussy taking up any of your precious time, you can manage to make shit like this. Pick a dick and start sucking. All hail. Whether or not you can or can't believe, I doubt anybody cares what a nobody like Scabra Cadabra can or can't do. With all the silly antics we do to entertain thousands of people all over the world, it should be obvious that we rarely take ourselves seriously. So this individual didn't bother to watch enough of the series to have a valid opinion. Besides, I get more pussy than a tampon. One of our first stops on this Hawaiian trip was an area known as Turtle Town where we had hoped to see some sea turtles or sharks but the water was so incredibly murky that we did not see a damn thing. <clears throat> so not a lot of the footage was any good and so we decided that in order to see some large animals we decided to go elsewhere. Okay, here we are at Maui Ocean Center getting ready to go get into the tank with a bunch of sharks. They sometimes have tiger sharks and they have hammerhead sharks and uh, eagle rays, and so off we go into Maui Ocean Center, which is an aquarium on the island of Ma Maui that allows people to go into the tanks with the sharks, which we have done before. We did it before in Australia, as you saw in a previous episode. Um, so here you see us behind the scenes getting ready to go, go get into the shark tank with the sharks at uh, Maui Ocean Center. Now. I felt the funnest part was actually just uh, descending down into the shark tank, being viewed by the people in the public area. Um, it was fun, don't get me wrong, and I recommend it to any fan of uh, thrill-seeking and sharks and things. It's really fun feeding this uh, eagle ray here, he was really nice. Um, so yeah, it was it was great. If you're already on Maui, I highly recommend it if you're a certified diver. Don't go all the way to Hawaii just for that, because uh, it later got disappointing. Yeah, the eagle ray was cool, but we spent most of our time just sitting on our knees, and when we swam around, we got in trouble. And so it got boring, even in the shark tank. So we were eager to get out of the shark tank, but the interesting thing about Maui Ocean Center is that the, the tanks are actually connected to the ocean. There's this filter system, which uh, has all these pipes that go into the ocean, and it's filtered in from uh, the actual sea surrounding Maui. But we decided we wanted to get back in the water for real, so we went to uh, Honolulu Bay where we decided to do some snorkeling. And so we got out our snorkeling gear since the scuba diving wasn't that fun the first time we t tried scuba diving there. And we did some snorkeling, feeding the fish, and having some fun, but even that had problems. So uh, I was taping Damon, who was trying to feed the fish, and I was trying to tape him with all the fish around, and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And uh, bam, I felt something on my leg. And 
I, I thought I just sort of scraped it up real bad, but then I saw this big sea urchin on the rock. I thought maybe I hit that instead. I've heard it said that uh, when you have a problem with uh, venomous creatures from the ocean, such as jellyfish and um, sea urchins, one way to take care of it is with ammonia. Now, the only source of ammonia that I have is in urine, so. <laughs> You're not going to feel my leg. <laughs> Oh, that feels so much better. So eventually we decided that, it, that we had had enough of the water and decided to enjoy the scenic road to Hana. As we were on this one lane road, the traffic got very slow and then it stalled. As you can see, there's some assholes up on this one lane road who've been blocking traffic for a long time so they can take pictures. They just randomly stopped the car to take pictures, leaving a long line of traffic. What a bunch of shitheads. Here I am at Honolulu Bay, trying to do what I used to see in the old Tarzan movies when he would swing from a vine. I'm trying to do that, and this is not a man-made rope. This is an actual vine that I'm going to try and swing from. <laughs> As you can see, we had found a perfect place for vine swinging. There was hardly anyone there, and we found out why. There was a large hive of bees there, and the bees had already stung one tourist who was in the vicinity. But the bees never attacked us, and so I thanked them for allowing me to have all those trees and all those vines all to myself. Thank you, honeybees. Oh, no! <laughs> Did high school make the early 1980s pretty rough for you? Yep, I got singled out, bullied, and beaten to a bloody pulp by conservative jocks who also preached the importance of God and Jesus in the school newspaper and yearbook. So you can see why my hatred of Christianity and Republicans increased. So, you began studying martial arts inspired by the Japanese science fiction and kung fu movies you were so enthralled by. More importantly, you gravitated toward any countercultures that rebelled against the status quo. Right, I was always into rock and roll, but the 1980s were a good time to be a teenager, and so I got into all these different genres of fashion rock, such as heavy metal, glam, punk, ska, rockabilly, new romantics, gothic, and so on. Yeah, Jello Biafro, Dead Kennedys, and other political punk bands really put your naive political views into intellectual words. So you continued to be progressive, democratic, and tolerant. And I became rather self-righteous. By 1985, I was a confident, egotistical womanizer who lived a total life of sin, promiscuous sex, and alcohol at the various death rock, nightclubs, and punk gigs in Northern California. Pentagrams, black clothes, and satanic heavy metal albums were the order of the day until my mid to late 20s. I never really gave it much thought, but I began to perceive Satan as just another man-made creation, a fictional character like Ultraman, Gamera, Green Hornet, Godzilla, and my other mythical heroes. For this edition of Tales from the Critic, I shall again trash another disappointing zombie film. The unbelievably stupid 2009 hit Zombieland is fine for airheaded teeny boppers, but not to a middle-aged zombie snob such as myself. I saw this embarrassing movie in a semi-crowded theater and many audience members were actually laughing at the bad humor, therefore proving I'm in the minority when it comes to this ridiculous Dan Hoskins directorial. I saw the same movie as everybody else at Harkin theater, but somehow I missed something. So let me give you some historical background. To me, classic zombies are atmospheric, slow-moving klutzes based on actual legends of hypnotized people. The first zombie movies I saw were Zombies of Moratao and Night of the Living Dead, both of which contributed to the suspenseful tradition of trance-like zombies in Haiti. 1980s City of the Walking Dead seemed to take cannibalistic mutants and more or less call them zombies, I guess. Since then, we've had several movies involving flesh-eating marathon runners that seem to pass for Zombies. If the villains in City of the Walking Dead, 28 Days Later, and this here Zombieland really are zombies, then we can broaden the cinematic definition. So now, any horror movies about the undead are zombies. So, let's see. Frankenstein? Vampires, mummies, and werewolves are now zombies. Making a zombie movie that lacks clumsy undead cannibals is like making a cowboy movie with no cowboys in it. Getting back to this embarrassing, incredibly overrated comedy, Woody Harrelson is embarrassing as an annoying, trigger-happy redneck who occasionally shoots zombies in name only. Even more annoying is the sappy, time-consuming, cliche-ridden romance between a couple of youngsters. Speaking of annoying, the writers have created a series of 
implausible scenarios that made me roll my eyes more than once. For example, in one ineptly written scene, Bill Murray puts on zombie makeup to scare some geek. Well, I already knew the little nerd had a gun. So when he shoots Bill Murray, I saw the outcome a mile away. From start to finish, Zombieland struck me as being predictable junk. I was, however, impressed by some aspects of the budget. Having all those crashed cars in the background really helped to generate a believable, effective atmosphere of gloom and doom. What a shame that the writers and director did not know what to do with this. Think of how impressive and atmospheric it could have been George Romero or one of those Italian directors or even the good folks who made Shaun of the Dead were the ones in charge of Zombieland. Sure, the movie has its share of action and the bloody makeup effects are okay. But in the final analysis, I can only rate this Columbia Pictures disaster a 3 out of 10. The Satanic Rituals. Satan Speaks. The Devil's Dictionary. The Satanic Witch. The Devil's Notebook. And the Satanic Bible are among the books that have been placed outside on the backyard lawn. And I shall now go on a little pilgrimage to obtain that information. But there's a catch. Also outside is Damon's aggressive territorial iguana who likes to play rough. Until you've been bitten and hospitalized and stalked by one of these things, you have no idea how scary this is. He's out here somewhere with his powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth. This is kind of dangerous. <laughs> Open the fucking door! Come in here! Fuck! Aha! I have been awarded the Satanic Bible! John, you want to give it a shot? Hell no! <laughs> you have that one. <laughs> this is mine. What Damon doesn't know is that we're gonna lock the door. Ha 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 